Why do so many Filipino workers go back home with less money than they started with? The first one I would actually say starts before they actually leave the Philippines. You have agencies charging for fees, permits being organized and processing and some even flights are sometimes ripped off of the person going overseas because most of these if not all are normally covered by the person that's actually employing what's happening is the billing the filipino as well as the company so that the agency gets money both ways the other side of this being is people take out loans for stuff that they don't actually need because they're thinking oh, i'm going overseas anyway i'm going to be making more money so uh Maybe we'll get a new TV because I can send my first month's paycheck, this sort of stuff. So before they even leave the Philippines, they have this debt that's already built up um, because they have all these people to pay. They've got the agency to pay. They've got the the stuff on Utang. The, you know, uh, Utang is um, on credit. And the reality is they haven't earned a single thing yet. And they're gain, gaining interest on all this stuff that they haven't actually paid a single centavo on. Once overseas they start the bling aspect of life. They want to buy status symbols that have zero value in real money and are just things for showing other people on Facebook. I've got a new Samsung phone, I've got new shoes, I've got a new shopping, uh, what do you call it, handbag or whatever it is. The reality is it's frivolous, it's wasting money like no tomorrow, but it's a sign of status that may be very far from the truth because it's wasting money that they don't have. It's, it's not having a lot of income here. They, these are disposable assets, you know, you can afford it. The reality is most people cannot afford these frivolous expenses, but also it gets on to the next problem, becoming the family ATM. Because let's be honest here, you're on there, on your Facebook, on your Twitter, whatever, showing you've got a new phone, got this, got that. And the family are going, oh, you got so much money. Um, you can put my kids through education. Uh, remember that debt of gratitude. Uh, you aren't sick. We need this, we need that, we need some rice, we need whatever. Send us some money. That is the next thing. The family ATM. They just keep the money coming because they never turn around and say, well, that's enough. They'll just want a set amount every month. Then they'll try and increase it with, oh, there's a family emergency. Can you send us more this month? Very, very common. And it means that the person that's actually the OFW overseas is not seeing most of their salary by the time they've got all these people feeding off them financially. Those accumulated debts that you had before you left the Philippines, paying them off, you're looking at at least three months of your salary completely. That's if you focused on just getting rid of all those debts over the next year. So three months of your one year contract or whatever, is actually paying off these debts and that's if you bother to do that because most Filipinos don't. They actually end up with more debts. Which gets us onto the unproductive assets because maybe you've got a job that's going to be in about 15 years because you've got a good employer, a good contract, etc. So you buy a house and lot or some other frivolous expense that is overvalued to begin with. From my own experience in the Philippines, I cannot value some of these houses and lots at the figures they come out with. Um, but it's a buyer's, a seller's market in that sense, from a, what do you call it, from a developer's point of view. Because they just keep building and building because they're making a fortune. But you are getting a mortgage on a house that is not worth what you paid for it. It's higher than you can get a return on the actual rentals most of the time so you can't even cover your own mortgage by renting it out because you're overseas anyway but you often already had a house anyway within the family there is no value in this type of asset at all because all you're doing is the little bit of money you've got left with after all these other debts is being absorbed by a property that has no real value is it's less than you're actually paying for it, which means that the developer is doing fine. He's charging you a mortgage, he's charging you interest, etc., etc., and 
you're thinking short term, which is, oh, it's only 6,000 a month, it's only 4,000 a month, 8,000, 10,000, doesn't really matter. The fact is the house isn't worth it. And that's why you need to change the way you think about these things. And the same goes for buying things like washing machines and other appliances that you don't really need. Understanding the real value of money is the problem. When I see RFWs go home, they take everybody out for lunch, they take people out to buy clothes, whatever. Everybody's trailing around along with the RFW that is basically wasting their retirement funds. But also, it may even be worse than that. They're not only wasting the retirement funds, but also the funds they need to renew their contract and any other expenses tied with it, because maybe they want to go for a promotion, but they have to do some extra engineering training or something else, but they may have to have some out-of-pocket expenses. But if you're giving it all away in food and taking everybody out to a restaurant and stuff to feel important or feel like it's an obligation you're giving away your retirement you're giving away your future my view on this is invite people around for dinner you don't have to take them out it's a lot cheaper and that's what normal people do in the western mindset the chinese are quite thrifty on similar ways they don't splurge every time they go home but you will find it's not just the Philippines where they'll over excessively spend because it often happens in places like India as well, which is why this is a mindset that is often coming from people from um, poorer backgrounds and poorer education because you have to change the way you see things. Because if you keep spending everything you've got, you have nothing for retirement. And reliance on others to carry you through your retirement um, which is a system that exists in the Philippines you're only carrying on that debt because that debt of gratitude is just going to continually cycle in the West I've never seen anybody do that as a father I want my kids to have no debt of gratitude to me whatsoever I want my kids to be able to go about their lives without having to worry about their parents and I think that is where some of the mindset has to change but also it comes from realizing that you need to learn the word no when family want money for XYZ no I don't have it spare but also when you're getting a new handbag a new pair of trainers and stuff you don't need to post it on Facebook. You don't need to put it in Twitter. If you're buying yourself something that is taking you months to save up a, you know, a little bit of your paycheck every month until you bought it, that's yours. The person that needs to be happy with that is you. You do not need to get other members of your family going, they've got money to spend, so let's go and ask them for money. It's not their money. It's your money. But you need to be a stronger person to say no. As you've no doubt guessed, it all comes down to the financial ability of the person. You need to understand that you need to start having savings, putting a percentage of your income away every single month for your entire life. Um, I do it, and everybody I know that's successful generally does it. And what you do is you build up a nest egg in different forms. You can have an emergency fund, so you're not going to the pawn shop to pawn off your goods and have interest against them because somebody's ill or something. You actually have some money there. But also, you don't need to help every member of your family. You're not the messiah. Um, but you also have to realize you need to be putting savings away for your retirement. Most of these problems come from the fact that people do not think ahead. And my best advice is, Go and research it, go and look at it, start to get your head around what other people do so that they become successful, they build up their retirement plans, they invest in the right things if investing, and they're looking to actually make an environment where they can say, right, I'm stopping my overseas work, I can go home knowing I never have to work again. Thanks for watching.